Thanks, Jim. And uh, I promise I won't be preaching, but just like in church, all the empty seats are in the front row. So if you want to come down to the front, uh, please come down. And there's lots of lots of space and things like that. Um, many people uh, will have uh, been aware of a, a television uh, program, not a documentary that was shown on ABC about a, a month ago. Um, and uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, in inverted commas, on that panel included Ray Evans and Bob Carter, and they've published some reports uh, that I'll be uh, trying to address. And the, and the aim, really, for, for my presentations is to look at some of the uh, misinformation that's being spread by some groups about global warming science, and as they title their uh, reports, Nine Lies About Global Warming or the Myth of Dangerous Human Caused Climate Change. It'd be nice to think that the science of global warming was reasonably well accepted amongst the community, but four uh, members of the House of Representatives also wrote a minority report for a standing committee on science and innovation in the federal parliament uh, released earlier this week on geosequestration. They all supported geosequestration, but they all said they do not believe that climate change has any link to human activity. And I'm going to present some analysis of that, including trying to look at some of the common misinformation that's spread by lobby groups in Australia and the United States and use the latest scientific assessment of climate change by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And of course, there's a range of information about global warming that can be used to provide evidence for global warming. And this is one of the sorts of, well, maybe misinformation that could be used to support global warming. The aerial coverage of swimwear on individuals has decreased significantly. And that might or might not be used as proof of global warming. I would argue that it probably isn't proof of global warming. But it certainly has shown a significant trend over time, as has observed aerial average temperatures over time. And what I'm going to try to do is to show that maybe that area is as useless a proof of either global warming happening or not happening as some of the other misinformation that is used by some of the climate change skeptics. And I should also add that this talk is going to be posted on the CASPI website and you'll be able to download the information. So what is global warming? Well, it's an increase in global average temperatures. And they've certainly changed, and I'm going to show that, over the last 100 years. But it does not mean that warming has occurred everywhere over the last century. There are certainly been places where it's cooled and warmed. And in fact, this winter in Melbourne has been a little bit cooler than last winter. That does not mean that global warming isn't happening. Global warming is used by the media, public information, to mean the increase in global average temperatures that's expected due to the increasing concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. I don't use that for the definition of global warming. Global warming just means warming in global average temperatures. And there have certainly been periods in the Earth's history over the last hundreds of millions of years when the Earth has been much warmer than present. There have also been periods in the last 100,000 years and million years when the Earth has been much cooler than present. That can be used to indicate natural variability of the climate, but it cannot directly be used as evidence for whether human activity is causing current observed warming in global average temperatures. And what I'm going to talk about is the arguments for and against human activity causing current variations in global temperatures. So these diagrams actually show what's happened in the top panel to global average temperatures over the last 150 years. And global average temperatures have increased over the last 100 years by about 8 tenths of a degree Celsius. Doesn't sound like much, but if you look over the whole record, that's larger than any of the decadal or 50 year variations over the last 100 years. Associated with that have been large increases in sea level and decreases in snow cover. And one of the myths is that the warming is due to the observations being taken in cities more than in the country areas. That is wrong. In fact, these records are based primarily on non-urban sites, as well as data from over the oceans. And we can see the warming 
in data from over the oceans, in data from glaciers, in data from remote sites, in reductions in snow cover, in reductions in ice cover, and in warming in the oceans and increases in sea level. So it's not due to biases in the temperatures made over the cities or in urban areas. There is an urban influence, but that's been removed from those temperature records of the global average temperature primarily. So myth one is wrong. Secondly, there have been large 10,000 year timescale variations in temperature associated with the occurrence of ice ages and interglacial periods. We are currently in an interglacial which has lasted for more than the last 10,000 years. And if we look over the last 400,000 years or 600,000 years, there are pronounced and nearly synchronous variations in global temperatures and the concentrations of many greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and methane. And we can get evidence for that from ice cores and from other sources. But in general, the variations in the greenhouse gases lags by a very short amount. The temperature variations. The temperature variations are generally initiated by changes in the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which are periodic. And these periodic variations lead to periodic ice ages about every 20,000 years or so. Sorry, about every 100,000 years and lasting every 20,000 years or something like that. The warm periods are relatively short of the order of 20,000 years. The cool periods are of the order of 100,000 years or so. The myth is that ice ages with the temperatures leading the greenhouse gas changes mean that greenhouse gases can't be causing global warming. Wrong. Yes, the temperature changes start to initiate the cooling periods and the warming periods, but the effects of the greenhouse gas changes are critically important as a feedback in amplifying the cooling or the warming. You cannot get the ice ages or the interglacial periods without the simultaneous changes in greenhouse gas variations. They're crucial in the warming. What about climate variations over a shorter period? Let's look at the recent period, the last 100 years or so, which is shown on the right-hand side, with a number of reconstructions of temperature variations in the northern hemisphere only for the last 1,000 years or more. And the argument is the medieval warm period, a warmer period around 1,000 to 1,200 AD, shown in here, was warmer than the present. And if you look in, North, uh, in England or in Western Europe, you can find locations where the medieval warm period, 1200 AD, was warmer than the temperatures in 1970 or in 1950. They are not warmer than at present. And if you look over the whole northern hemisphere, you find that the temperatures over the last 50 years are warmer than the temperatures in the medieval warm period. And this is not from one record. This is from about 12 different analyses using different analysis techniques for different parts of the northern hemisphere. So again, the warmth of the last half century is unusual and the medieval warm period was not warmer for the northern hemisphere average than the present warmth. 